Hello, this is Joe from Joe Knows the Cryptos, and I am back. I've been gone for over a hundred days with no videos to you, but I am back. I have some big reasons for being back. We're going to get into those in just a little bit. First, I'm going to tell you what I've been doing. Then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and why I'm back now. Why now? What's going on in the crypto space that's got Joe so amped up? He came out of a over a hundred day hibernation from the crypto space. I've still been deeply involved, but I've got a lot going on. Let's get into that first. So what have I been doing? Not that you care, maybe you do, and if you do, thank you. Uh, but what have I been doing? Well, for starters, I was running two companies and tomorrow we've hired a new COO to take my place in one of them, which I'm very thankful for. And I get to get out of that world. Uh, I'll still be involved, but super excited for that. I'll, that means I'll get a little more time back. The second thing I've been doing and very busy with is I've been spending more time exercising and going to the gym. I've been, you know, one of my sons has gotten me uh, back in the gym and, and the gains I've seen have been great and I've really enjoyed working out and I feel better. The other thing I've been doing is spending more time with my kids and family. That's been very good. I stopped drinking a while back and that gave me a lot of time back and I'm thankful for it. Uh, but long story short, I've been very busy personally. Now, what have I been doing in the crypto space the last couple months? Well, quite frankly, with the way that Bitcoin's been going, and I'll, I'll, I'll pull that in here, you know, we've been trending sideways for so long. You know, we've tested a few tops, we've hit a few bottoms. You know, we've been, we've been just kind of going like this. And I've used that as an opportunity to bulk up my grid bots. I've been DCAing and buying into uh, Bitcoin when it when it goes down to the 50s, I start buying. I've been piling, I should say for me, piling stacks of Bitcoin and Ethereum, as well as Solana and a couple other ones. And I've been just increasing my stacks overall. Have not gotten into one DeFi project other than maybe some liquidity farming here and there, just in, in, in basic stable coins and that kind of thing. Uh, but haven't gotten into any nonsensical DeFi projects, you probably won't see me in any of those anymore because I like the returns I've been getting in my bots, my my DCA bots, my grid bots, um, my easy bots, and things like that. So which ones have I been using? I've been using Pionex. You know, I've been using um, EasyBot, Johnny Blockchain. Have I been using any other ones or is that it? I think it's that might be it. Let's see. What did I say here? Yep, Pionex, EasyBot, and Johnny Blockchain. Those have been working okay. I got into, you know, some, you know, and the Johnny Blockchain is kind of neat because you can go into some of the, the DeFi and go into PancakeSwap, um, but I kind of got hurt in one, but we don't need to talk about that now. What else have I been doing? I've been trying to learn how to trade. I tried to, I started learning on trading on very high margin and very short time frames. I got wrecked, okay? I do not recommend that highly. I got pretty wrecked in those. I don't need to go into the details, but I learned that a longer time frame with less leverage, it was more likely to win a trade. Imagine that. So I'm back to doing that. So I'm trying to get back to homeostasis and equilibrium for me. And let's talk about why am I back right now? Let's go back to this Bitcoin Let's go back to this Bitcoin piece. By the way, everything I talk about, I traded on, you know, EasyBot, Johnny Blockchain, uh, Pionex, um, Margex, where I traded on margin. All these things, I'm going to have links down below. If you're not a subscriber, like and subscribe. This is certainly not financial advice. I hate saying that. I don't think I need to say it to this crowd, but I'm going to say it anyway. Just because I'm doing it doesn't mean you should or shouldn't. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. This stuff I'm showing you is, is the risks are well known. They make you sign things before... Um, getting on these things, but let's take a look at the screen. We showed this briefly before. This is Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, you know, it, it hit an all-time high around 73, 74 ish. It went down. It went up. It went down. People are speculating that's it for this bull run. I don't believe it. You can't go any bit amount of time without hearing about Bitcoin. All the ETFs now. The Ethereum ETF is out there. Solano is up next, hopefully, um, on that ETF. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But there's so much attention on Bitcoin. I, I've watched so many. Uh, I've watched uh, was Michael Saylor. God, that guy has a he's a wealth of Bitcoin knowledge. I know people that are getting into Bitcoin now and ask me about it that had no interest a year ago. You know, you're seeing the excitement. You're seeing China come back to the market, Russia come back into the market. 
you're seeing um, options about to open up for Bitcoin. So, and you look at Bitcoin as, you know, a true currency that could take over world currencies, you know, BRICS, the, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, the, these countries that are trying to move away from the US dollar. What do you think they might adopt as a currency that's less fluctuating than their own? I mean, those currencies are all in the crapper. So what are they gonna do? I, I don't know. They might go to Bitcoin or, or a stable coin or something of the sorts. You know, it, um, it, but the usage of, of Bitcoin and blockchain, it's only going up. So when I see this kind of thing, dude, I just think it's coiling up for a big spike. We haven't gone parabolic. I mean, yeah, we're up three times this year, which is pretty darn good. And it, you know, if you you even if it ends here, you can't be too unhappy about it. But my prediction is, I still think we're 80, 90, 100 thousand by the end of the year. And here is why. And this is the excitement that's brought me back in. I started putting money back into my my crypto bots, uh, the DCA, the Easy Bots because I think we're, we're poised and ready to go. Now, I said this on a video a while back. I said, the liquidity, when the Fed drops the rate, that will be um, a market mover, okay? That will be a market mover. And I got a lot of pushback, people saying, well, that doesn't have anything to do with the Bitcoin market. I don't know what those people are thinking. Let me show you this. Um, well, by the way, this is last week on the 17th, the Federal Reserve said, the, on the 17th, the Federal Reserve said, we're cutting basis, 50 basis points off I shouldn't say the Federal Reserve, it's the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee that meets uh, about nine, 10 times a year. It's not monthly, it's nine, 10 times a year. And th they looked at their benchmark rate, which is the overnight funds rate. And you've heard this a million times. I don't wanna go too deep into detail on it, but basically they cut their rate 50 basis points. Okay, so what do they go? They went to, well, they're 525, 550 basis points. That's 5.25, 5.5%. They cut 50 basis points, all right? So still 5% on your base rate, 475, 500 or 5% on their base rate. Okay, that's not crazy, but look what's up next. Look at this. This is the F, uh, CME Fed Watch. They, this is a conglomerate, or I should say an aggregate of people saying if they're gonna lower rates and what percentage. November, another 50 basis point cut, 60% chance at this point, it's still early, a lot of data is going to come out between now and then, but a 60 basis or 60 percent chance there's going to be another 50 basis point hit. That'd be a hundred basis points in two meetings. They hadn't raised it or lowered it. I'm sorry, they did raise it 11 meetings in a row. Then they sat still for a while, but they hadn't lowered it in four years. Okay, and now they're going to do 100 basis points. And then you go to December's meeting. December's meeting, 50 basis points for another 25. 25 basis points for another 50. So that could be anywhere. And then 25% says it's probably going to stay static from where it was in November. Um, I just don't believe that. Okay. I just don't believe that. I think in that's December. So I think we're going to have two more, more rate hits this year and to the tune of around 100 to 150 basis points total. And so if you think about that, that 5% rate, think about your savings account. The second the Fed dropped their rates. The second the Fed dropped their rates, the banks all said, look, your savings rate is no longer 4% or 5%. It's a half a percent lower. You know, your credit cards, if they're based, if you're based on a, a function of prime, they're coming down, right? If you look at your auto loans now, the new auto loans coming out are going to come down. Student loans potentially coming down. Home equity lines of credit coming down. So what does this mean for the market? This means more liquidity in the market, more money, more M2, more cash in the market that's going to search out for a return. There's going to be a flight to quality. Right now at 5%, you know, a couple of weeks ago, if you were 5% in your savings account and you have a significant amount of money and there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, 5% is not a bad return. You're keeping your money right where it was. There was a lot of money sitting in cash, a ton of money sitting in cash. And if you look at the economic data that was coming out, the economic data that was coming out was not, it was mixed. And the problem is that people spent a ton of money during COVID because they got a ton of money from the government. They kept spending that money. They went back to work, spent the money, realized they didn't have enough. So what'd they do? They put it on credit cards. So your retail sales are still looking good, which means that the jobs are still looking good until you have no more credit. And once you've exhausted your credit, 
Now you got to pay that. You're going to going to default or you're going to pay it. And if you're paying it, well, that's going to take away money you can spend out on retail things, which means that retail jobs are going to go down, which means it just starts to spiral. And the Fed knows this. You know it. I know it. We all know it. That that's what's going to happen. And the economy is not going to look so rosy. But that's at your entry level, base level, the bottom of the food chain. Then you have the people at the top with lots of money that's sitting on the sidelines. Well, their money on the side, and they're not going to lose their jobs, by the way. The guys that have millions, guys and girls that have millions of dollars are not going to lose their jobs. They are going to figure out ways to be more profitable. So they're going to take their money that's sitting on the sidelines, it's in bank accounts, or maybe it's in the stock market. My prediction is that, well, it's going to, all asset classes will rise. You know, your, your, your stocks, your bonds, your real estate, um, your crypto has potential to rise. And that's what's going to happen when there's more liquidity in the market. That's a long explanation, but that's what I'm looking to see. And this was the catalyst that's going to set it off. Why am I back? That's why I'm back. And if you look at this stuff, like the greed, fear and greed sentiments, um, oh, you can't see that. Now you can. Um, crypto fear and greed indicator, we're, we're dead even. A little bit towards greed. Well, you're, you know, last week there was fear. I bought when it was in the 50s. I've continued to buy Bitcoin. I've raised my, you know, because I had some in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, but I just wanted more. I'm getting greedy for Bitcoin um, because they were fearful. Right now, I'm not going to buy a lot in the 60s. I'm going to see what it does. Well, we could have potentially another dip. Why am I telling you this? Because the broader, I don't care if you love altcoins, if you love Bitcoin, Bitcoin brings the market up and it drags it down. There are some examples of, where, let me see, where's my bubbles? Can I get my bubbles up? There you go. <laughs> this is the last hour. Look at the year. The bubbles are green. It's been a good year for crypto. Bonk, 8,411. Sol, 626%. Pepe, 1,000%. Um, let me see, where's another one? Oh, gosh. Bitcoin, 135%. Not terrible. Shiba, 87%. AVAX, 198%. Go back a month. Not a bad month. You know, typically September's not a great month for asset classes like crypto or, or stocks. Weak, we're pretty green. Long and short of it, if Bitcoin can break this $64,000 mark, you know, it's. let's see if we can post a new mid-high, new high. And then if it comes down, it won't come down as far. Right now, if you're looking, if you're looking on a bigger time frame, you know this is this is poise. If you pull up the MACD, oh, let me see here. Sorry for the boringness right now, but if you look at the MACD on this, the MACD as I call it, it's just kind of showing um, trends trending. And if you look up the MACD, we're at the top. Might it go down? Sure, but does it? Is it going to make a new lower low? Or is it going to be a higher low? You know, if you go back here, if you find this, you know, if we kind of stay above this, you know, $58,000 mark, which I think on this next low, if you take the next high, you know, if we pop, if we don't below go below 60,000 on this next dip, and it, it's going to, my guess, and don't act on this, is not financial advice. This is a prediction, a guesstimation. You know, if we bounce off this 60 and we go up, we could pass that 64,000. We're going to liquidate some shorts and we're going to pass that 64,000 and, you know, hopefully it'll climb to a new high. I don't know, but it's going to be exciting because we have two more Fed rate cuts by the end of the year, which is going to add liquidity to the market. We've got, you know, uh, more excitement over Bitcoin, more countries buying Bitcoin, more people buying Bitcoin, more ETFs buying Bitcoin. I don't know. It feels like the perfect storm to me. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Let me know your opinions down below. Thank you for allowing me into your screens. I hope to see you real soon. I hope to put out more videos. There's a lot of hope in there because I'm still very busy. This is a passion project for me. I love the crypto. I do think it's the way of the future. I do think banks are in trouble. They're either going to adopt or they're going to die. I think that people are in trouble. They're either going to adopt or they're going to die. You have AI going to flood the marketplace very soon. The amount of AI that's coming out, the speed in which it's coming out, blockchain is going to be a part of that. Pay attention. Don't get left behind. Make sure you're using the AI yourself in your job, in your workplace, your business, because if you're not, you can get run over. Make sure um, to take a look at Bitcoin. Let me know what you think. Put the comments down below. I hope this was informative. I hope you welcome me back with open arms, and I'll see you next time.